Okay, let's get started. Come on, uh, wake up. There we go. It's awake, and now let's get a pen. And thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. I uh, was not able to be on campus today on Tuesday, and I really wanted to not miss class. And so we're uh, going to do the uh, uh, section of the chapter, chapter 8, on multiple regression and correlation uh, electronically. I had you watch the two videos about linear regression and multiple regression. And now I want to show you an example of how a psychologist would use multiple regression. This is a paper I gave at the EPA in 2006, uh, Charitable Pledging Following the 2004 Tsunami, Social Impact Theory, Was America Stingy? So this is about the 2004, uh, you know, uh, you know, Indian Ocean uh, tsunami. Uh, about a quarter million people were killed. Uh, the devastating was unbelievable. And uh, the you know government uh, governments pledged six billion dollars, and uh, a lot of money was flowing in during the first couple of days. However, uh, this caused a great deal of controversy. Uh, you know, uh, the Undersecretary for the UN uh, Emergency Relief uh, said that the Americans' pledge of $35 million is really stingy. And uh, this caused a great deal of political controversy. And I saw a really clear uh, example of how I could use a, a theory in social psychology to really evaluate this idea of whether or not we're stingy or not. And here's some more you know, newspaper headlines about this that were stingy. And so what I was going to do was uh, examine this question objectively, and I was going to use uh, social psychological principles uh, to look at different variables that would predict how uh, you know, generous we should be. And specifically, I was going to use Latin A's social impact theory. Uh, social impact theory says that the uh, impact of an event uh, socially on you in terms of social pressure uh, is due to the status of the uh, you know uh, thing influencing you the psychological distance of the thing influencing you and the number of sources uh, so uh, somebody has the opportunity to influence you based on how socially uh, distant or uh, socially present they are on their status and how many people are trying to affect you. And uh, as an example, Latin A and uh, Bassett did this study where they asked subjects to pretend they were the role of a newspaper editor and they were asked to allocate the no amount of newspaper space to different stories. And they varied the status, the distance, and the number of people involved in each story. And the allocation of coverage was predicted by social impact theory. And I recognize that you could use social impact theory to predict the social impact on different countries in terms of the, the tragedy in the Indian Ocean area. And so we're going to look at the strength or the status, the immediacy, and the number of sources and how that impacts the social you know, pressure to give. In terms of the tsunami, uh, the strength uh, of the impact was, I operationally defined it as the number of dead country persons, that is uh, how many people from your country died in the uh, tsunami. Uh, the immediacy, I operationally defined that as literally the distance to Bandar Ash, uh, which was the center of the uh, earthquake and the tsunami. And the number of sources, which I conceptualized as the number of people who died altogether, uh, that was constant for every country, so I dropped that from the analysis. So I was mainly looking at the strength, that is the number of dead, and the immediacy, that is how far away the country was from the uh, impact zone. And so the data, I looked at Reuters reports of donation pledges as of January 6th, a, a you know, week after the uh, tsunami, number of dead, I use the uh, reported uh, number of dead per country by the Associated Press. press. And then finally, distance. I used uh, 
you know, Google Earth, and I found the distance in miles from uh, the epicenter of the earthquake to the capital city of the country. And then finally, I added in one control variable, which was domestic, uh, gross domestic product. This is the amount of disposable income different countries have. You could imagine that, well, if you're looking at how much a country gives in terms of pledges, well, of course, it's based on, uh, you know, how many people live there or another, and how much money they have, or another way of looking at it, how much money the country altogether has. And that's gross domestic product. A, a small country would not have a very big gross domestic product. A larger country probably would. So uh, I use this as a control variable. And so in general what I was going to do was I was going to do a multiple regression analysis on all the countries and see whether or not you know uh, the predicted relationships uh, from social impact theory work. And then I was going to do another multiple regression analysis and what I was going to do then is test directly the theory of American stinginess. And what I was going to do was remove the United States from the data set and then redo everything. And then I would have the data, the results of that analysis, and then I would uh, basically use that to predict a regression line uh, from all the data and then I would plug in the United States data into the regression equation and see where the United States fell based on uh, what was predicted and what we actually gave. And so uh, when I originally looked at the descriptive statistics, uh, so gross domestic product, uh, and I'm mainly going to talk today about the uh, analysis of government giving and I had data from 27 governments and so the average uh, gross domestic product was uh, 1.2 trillion dollars largely affected by an outlier the United States the average distance was about 5,000 miles and uh, government pledging was on average uh, 120 million dollars. The average number of dead per country was 13. And you begin by doing what we call a first uh, zero order or a simple correlation. And so what I did was I looked at government pledging and correlated that with gross domestic product, uh, correlated that with distance, and that should be negative uh, because uh, social impact theory says the closer you are to something, the more impact it has. And then the number of dead. And uh, so, uh, as we can see here, uh, the only thing that was significant at the first zero order correlation was the number of dead, which was uh, 0 0.54. That's a, that's a R, a Pearson's R. So you know that the relationship is a strong relationship between the number of dead and the government pledging. But that's at the, the you know, just correlating the variables together in, you know, individually and separately. Uh, multiple regression is about combining the predictor variables in order to predict the criterion variable. And so here's a path analysis of what I was setting up. I was going to say that our criterion variable, our DV, which is government giving, was going to be affected by our uh, predictors or our quasi-IVs of the number of dead and distance. And then a uh, control variable was going to be a gross domestic product. And so I have gross domestic product connected here with these arrows to the arrow from like dead to giving. And that means that's the moderator variable. And that's what uh, you know a control variable is. It's going to be a moderator variable. It's going to moderate the relationship between uh, our quasi IV and our DV. Uh, I don't see it as actually predicting the uh, actual uh, dependent variable. And so I did the uh, multiple regression, and this is what you get out of the multiple regression. And specifically, a uh, couple things that are important. First off, uh, you know, 
the order in which you enter the variables into a multiple regression analysis are important because what happens is the multiple regression analysis statistically removes the effect of earlier variables from later variables. So I was very specific in that I entered gross domestic product first because that's a control variable. And so what I'm saying is I want my other variables, the number of dead and the distance, I want to look at them and their relationship to uh, giving without the effect of gross domestic product. And with multiple regression, which is one of the major benefits, I can statistically do that. I can statistically say, what if gross domestic product didn't matter in terms of giving? Uh, you know, what would be the effect of the number of dead on giving and distance on giving? And so, again, uh, gross domestic product had no significant relationship with a giving. And so then, in the second step of the model, I entered uh, gross domestic product and the number of dead, my important, you know, quasi-IVs. And so, we get this table, and what does it say? The B values are the different uh, variables in the regression equation, and in the you know first order or zero order correlation, you have Y equals MB, and so uh, what we have here is the constant. This is the uh, Y intercept. This is where uh, the uh, regression line intercepts the uh, Y axis, and that's the X value of where it does that. Uh, these are the uh, weights or the slopes of the regression lines or the parts of the regression line or the, the, the uh, share of the regression lines uh, of each one of the variables. So that's what the B stands for. The beta is essentially taking these uh, B weights and standardizing them and once they're standardized this is kind of like you can read it as like a Pearson R and so uh, the gross domestic product the beta weight uh, which you can kind of interpret as a Pearson's R is around 0.2 which means it's between kind of smallish and okayish or moderate and uh, distance first off notice this distance is now negative and the reason why is the other variables in the uh, regression analysis are acting as suppressors and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, and so then finally what this tells us is that the total model altogether which is down here it predicts about uh, you know in terms of like an R value around uh, 34 percent of the variance in the criteria and that's a significant amount and the change in how it's able to predict things from the first model which was just GP, uh, GDP to the full model that was significant also so adding in uh, distance and the number of dead above and beyond gross domestic product that significantly increased my ability to predict uh, the amount of giving. So uh, I need to return to this idea of the suppressor variable. What that means is this is really what's going on. Uh, remember the model I showed you before. This is what I predicted. Uh, I predicted that you know our, my two variables from the theory would affect giving and then we would control for gross domestic product and what actually happened was only one variable is truly predicting giving uh, whereas dead and gross domestic product are both acting as moderator variables moderating the, ver the relationship between distance and giving and once we control for these variables we see that there's a relationship between distance and giving. So look at all the things I was able to do uh, with the multiple regression analysis so far. I was able to work out what the path diagram really looks like. 
uh, I was able to recognize that my model predicts giving uh, you know, significantly better than nothing and significantly better than just looking at the control variable. And I was able to look at the variables I was interested in without the effect of the control variable or holding constant the control variable. Those are all very important things. And so in the next set of analyses, what I did was I actually used the other aspect of uh, multiple regression, which is to predict things. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to predict, based on the rest of the world, what the United States should be giving as charitable donations. And so what I did was I took the uh, data for the United States out of the model, out of the you know, computer program, and I ran it all again. And so everything here is the same, except that I don't have the United States in here. And so uh, what we have here is we have uh, gross domestic pro product was en entered first. Uh, that's the control variable that I entered these two things. Again, gross domestic product was not significant in predicting uh, giving. And so now let's look at everything else. So what I have here is the B weight and the slopes or the share of the slope uh, of gross domestic product, the number of dead, and uh, the uh, distance. And again, uh, distance turns out to be negative, which we wanted it to be. And uh, finally, again, the only thing that's significantly uh, predicting uh, you know, the uh, giving by itself is the number of dead. And we can see here that the overall model, everything together, significantly predicts uh, about 32% of the variance in giving. And finally, uh, our, my special model adding in distance and dead above and beyond uh, gross domestic product significantly predicts giving, holding gross domestic product constant. But that's what I did before. What I want to do now is say, okay, let's say I have all this data here. Uh, I want to use it to predict a regression line for giving. And so I can go ahead and do that. And you look at this and say, oh my god, no, it's easy. It's just a bunch of addition and multiplication. Uh, and basically, here's what we have. The B weight here, the constant, this is the y-intercept. So y hat is my predicted y value. It's a little hat like that. That's what the uh, you know variable looks like. So there's 44.094. That's where it crosses the regression line. And then uh, you add in, like in your you know zero order regression uh, line, you add in the other variables, the effect of the other variables in terms of the slope. And so you have gross domestic product times its slope uh, you know, share added into distance times distances slopes share. And then also you toss in dead and its slope share. And then you work that all out and then it gives you, uh, you know, a regression line. So now you have a regression line. And then what you do is you just plug in the data from the United States. And this is the data from the United States. And so I just plug it in and I multiply everything out. And it comes out to this regression line now predicts that Americans should have contributed uh, $661 million. That would be, based on everybody else in the world or the 26 other countries, that would be what the regression line I created based on their uh, contributions. That's what we should have given. And that's the exact spot on the nose prediction, but we could have a confidence interval around that. And so I want to actually look at a confidence interval. And so I choose 95% for my confidence interval because if 
if I'm 95% confident of some uh, something, that means I'm 5% inconfident or you know wrong about it, and 0.05 is a very common error level in psychology. And so again, that's another equation to work out that's very simple, and that gives me a range of plus or minus uh, 239 million dollars. So basically what I do is I take the predicted value, 661 million dollars, and then I subtract uh, 239 and then add it, and I get a range of 222 million to 900 million dollars. Actual government giving was 350 million dollars. Oh, there's more of that. And so this works out to like this. Uh, the regression line predicted that we should be right here and the error confidence interval was this much and we actually gave uh, within the confidence interval so we are for all intents and purposes uh, giving our fair share and not really being stingy uh, so that's the uh, an example of how you can use the uh, uh, you know multiple regression uh, you know technique in psychology and uh, oh yeah by the way uh, people use this in real life all the time and those who, who do it they only work with things that are significant significant predictors and so to be actually very accurate uh, since uh, you know uh, you know the uh, only the number of dead was significant for government giving I should run the analysis again but only look at uh, the number of dead and so I did that again and here's my uh, you know uh, intercept and here's the slope of the line and I basically uh, calculated everything out and so again we have a regression line or a confidence interval that went from 47 million dollars to 485 million dollars Again, the United States within its, was within its confidence interval. So we were giving what anybody would predict a country that lost as many people in the accident would have lost. And here's just another picture of it. It predicted us right here, and here's our confidence interval, and we're within the confidence interval. And then, of course, uh, in my talk uh, at EPA, I did talk about limitations of the data and limitations and problems with the study because that's what every psychologist does. Okay, thank you.